destiny helpers and destiny partners. So as I'm going to pray for you, you pray for me also, then let's pray together asking God to release destiny helpers. Destiny helpers manifest in different forms, different places. For Joseph, they appeared as two prisoners with him, co-prisoners in the prison. They were his destiny helpers. They were the one who shared with the king about the news, about the gift that he carries, the seed that he carried. So sometimes we have this limited way of looking at how God should work, what he should do, when he should do it, with our limited understanding. And sometimes we miss our destiny helpers. That's a word for somebody out there listening to me. Sometimes we miss our destiny helpers because they don't fit into our paradigm. They don't fit into a religious paradigm. And God wants to break that religious paradigm and give you the grace to recognize the problem with the, with the Pharisees where they missed Jesus. Can you believe Jesus walked, God walked in person and they missed him, <laughs> the Messiah they were waiting for. He was their destiny helper. God sent the greatest gift to humanity, but they did not recognize him. Why? Because Jesus did not fit into their paradigm how the Messiah should look like, how God or a king should function, what he should have, how he should, what kind of clothing, how he should walk, how he should talk. Jesus did not fit into any of their religious paradigm. And the same thing happens to people today with the kingdom of God because it doesn't fit into their religious paradigm we grew up in. And we doubt it, we question it, then we miss it. We waste our time, our life. May the Holy Spirit give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation to recognize your destiny helpers when God sent them to you in Jesus Christ's holy name. Somebody receive that. May the Lord give you the ability to see May the Lord give you the ability to recognize so you won't miss your destiny helpers, partners when they walk, when they appear before you in Jesus' name. They may not have the same skin color. They may not dress like you. They may not talk like you. They may not have the same accent. They may not have the same hairdo or the hairstyle. They may look like Shower bread with no hair. <laughs> Handsome like shower bread, you know. Handsome like shower bread with no hair. Or <laughs> they appear in all kinds of forms. You know what happened to the guy, a military general from uh, which country he was from? Naaman. His name was Naaman. And he had a little servant girl who told him what he should do to get healed of his leprosy. She was his destiny helper. That little servant girl who he didn't respect, who he didn't appreciate. What good can come from a servant girl? What do you know about my situation? What do you know about my condition? Do you know how much money I have? How much money I spend for my healing? And you are telling me that I need to go to this prophet guy somewhere up in the mountain who doesn't even, even have a house, no office. And then he's going to tell me to go and <laughs> jump into some dirty water to get healed. That's the way God works, people of God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So get your 
mindset off of your limited understanding of your culture and the way you've been brought up and it is killing you. And it's been holding you back because you're fighting and you want God to do something in the way that you think and he's outside of the box and you're upset and you're not happy with it. And we are constantly fighting with God because he doesn't fit into our paradigm. He doesn't do the things we wanted when He when we wanted. And the Holy Spirit is telling us to stop fighting. Yield. Yield to him. And he will do in one second what we couldn't make it happen in 30 years. One moment of God's favor is enough to cause the blessing to come to you. What we couldn't happen in 40 years, 50 years of striving. One second, one word, one testimony of a prisoner, one testimony of a servant girl can change your destiny. Unlock the breakthrough that you've been waiting for all your life. So never underestimate Never underestimate the value. Oh, my God, my God, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I have to preach this morning, you know. Woo! <laughs> Never underestimate the value. What, what um, God has brought you, what God has brought you. So let's pray together this morning for the Holy Spirit to give us the Ability, the grace, the discernment to understand our destiny helpers when he sends them before you in a prison cell in a way that you never expected. And some of you, Holy Spirit saying you missed some of your destiny helpers, but he's going to send it back. He's going to send them back. If you miss them once, don't worry. He is going to restore. In Jesus' name. Father, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We come before you, Father, hungry, open, ready to receive, ready to see. Forgive us, my God. Forgive us, Father, for taking lightly our destiny helpers because they didn't fit into our paradigm. They didn't look like the people that from our same culture and color and, and dress code and language and all those things, Father. Forgive us for taking lightly, talking down because we didn't appreciate the gift, the blessing that you sent to us. Forgive our pride. Forgive our pride. Say that after me. Forgive our pride, Father, that we didn't, yield, pride. That we didn't yield because we are so caught up on ourselves, our ugly self. We thank you that we will, you will give us the ability to recognize, to discern our destiny helpers, our destiny partners. I bless your people today, Father, because that's what they need. That's what they need. They need destiny helpers. They need de destiny partners. They need destiny collaborators. They need a destiny connectors. We thank you. I bless each one of them. I break every paradigm, every mindset that fight against the will and the plan of God. Every stronghold, we cast them down. We take authority over. I thank you for my brother Ben. Thank you for anointing him. Thank you for the grace upon his life. As he shared with us today, the seed that you have planted in him, the kingdom that you showed him when he was born again, Father. I thank you for blessing him, being with him, Holy Spirit. I bless everyone who is watching, who is listening, and who will be listening later, Father, through from YouTube and Facebook or whatever platform they're watching it from. I pray for Prince. That young man, Prince, Father, may your hand be upon him. Prince, God has a calling upon your life. You are not a mistake. 
You are not here by chance. God has brought you. You don't need to worry about your life, your future. Yield it to him. God has taken care of it. You are in his hand. You are his child. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you, Prince. You are not here this morning by accident. God brought you. Because he wants to plant something into your spirit, man, this morning. And he wants to build you. He wants to speak to you and tell you that you belong to him. God has gotten you in his hands. And nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing can destroy your destiny. All you have to do is to yield to Abba. Be a son. To your heavenly father i bless you today in jesus name i release favor i release destiny helpers for your life i don't even know you i never met you i just saw you today on the screen sitting there but i felt this is your day this is your moment there's something happening in your spirit man there's a shift there's a change happening right now everybody pray for prince please in Mozambique. I never been there. I had not been there yet. But God told me he will send me to Mozambique. I thank you, Father, for Mozambique. I bless that country. Every devastation, every destruction, poverty that is happening in that country. Thank you for building. Thank you for raising up nation builders, Father. There's so many churches but they have no clue. They're waiting for God while God has been waiting for them 6,000 years. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for not recognizing. Let not what happened to the religious leaders, let not happen to us, Father. Let not miss our moment and miss our destiny helpers and partners. I bless you people because something supernatural is going to happen to them today in this call. And we give you all the glory, praise, and honor. Holy Spirit, we yield. We yield our thoughts, our mindsets, everything. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. 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 Well, welcome everyone who joined late. Those who are here will be watching later. Good to have you here. Please keep your mic muted while somebody else is speaking so we don't have any interruption. We have our wonderful brother with us today, Ben Latumba. He's a kingdom businessman all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. He will share his story with us. And it's such a privilege and honor to be connected with you, Ben, and to get to know you the little that I know. We talked a couple of times on the phone, saw you in many calls, and my apology is not reaching out more, you know what I mean? But the time is coming. God has brought us together for such a time as this, for his kingdom assignment. You are not alone. And God wants to tell you, Ben, my brother, you are not alone. You are not alone. Let that word sink into your spirit, man. Because there's something that he wants to do in your life also while you're sharing. That he wants, it, he wants to assure you that you are not alone. Amen. Please share with us. Welcome. Everybody clap your hands and Welcome, greeting family. Chumba. Greeting family. Thanks, Eva Moregas introduced me. My name is Ben Lutumba. I'm speaking from Cape Town, South Africa. When Jesus said the gospel of the kingdom is going to go to the end of the earth, he was speaking about us here in Cape Town. <laughs> yes, Cape Town is the end of the earth. There's nothing after us. So this place is a launching pad for the kingdom of God to the rest of the continent. It's a gateway 
And I'm glad that next week the Kingdom School is going to start here in Cape Town, one of the first in Cape Town. Because there's such an anointing, and I believe this is the Kingdom City. This is the place that God has chosen to start something great. As you can hear my name and my accent, I'm from the French country called the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 1999, God uprooted me out of that country and brought me to South Africa without me knowing why he brought me here. But it's taken me few years, decades to understand why I was brought here for the purpose of the kingdom of God. So we started a topic on the dominion. I'm not going to preach much today. I'm going to put the practical thing to what we've been speaking about. The seed that God has planted in me, sorry, whatever you want to speak to me. Yeah, if you could just sit back a little bit so we can see your face on the camera. Yes, like that. Or if you can put the camera a little up. So we can, yeah, that's good. You know? Perfect. Okay. So I want to uh, speak about the seed that God has planted in me that is beginning to be released. So I'm not necessarily going to preach, but I'm going to speak and put the <coughs> practical or, or action to what we've been speaking about, about the dominion. It's a subject that is very important in our walk with the Lord in the kingdom. Because we come out of religion. I mean, remember in 2007 when God radicalized me with the message of the kingdom. At a time I was pastoring a church. And that morning I went to them I said, this is the last day. God said we must close this building. It's not fulfilling this, this purpose. At that year Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. No, go ahead. That was. So since then, I begin to discover the kingdom. I saw the kingdom, enter the kingdom, and I begin to discover the kingdom of God. And begin to establish in the domain that God has called me. Because we say dominion is about domain. So we are the king. Our Lord is the king of kings. He has a domain. And we also be entrusted with the domain. So God has called me to the domain of entrepreneurship and business. For the past decades, I've been operating there. Uh, like I said... You can see my name, the Dominion Mandate. That's what we've been speaking about. Uh, <clears throat> but I want to quote the scripture in Proverbs 23, 7. The Bible says that for as he thinks within himself, so is he. So we are the sum total of our thought. Whoever we are today is the sum total of our thought. And our thought has been influenced mainly by religion. That tells us to focus to go to heaven and to forget what's happening in the earth. And a lot of what has been introduced here as a subject of dominion because it shifts the focus from the mentality of going to heaven to now occupying the territory for the Lord and unveiling the gift that God has given to us. Because he says in Ephesians, to each and every one of us, a gift was, a major gift was given. So nobody can accuse God that they have not given me anything. We all have something of God within us that must be released in order to, to bring the change to a particular domain, a particular area that where God has assigned us. And I'm not sure where many of you have been assigned, but like I said, myself, I've been assigned into the king, into the domains of entrepreneurship and business. And uh, like you can see, the, the paradigm of our perspectives has been entirely predisposed 
by affiliation to the ideological Christianity. Christianity has done more damage than the devil itself. So whatever we're thinking today is mostly come from a religion. I mean, been a pastor for, for 15 years before the Lord radicalized me and get me out of that religion. The thing that I did every Sunday just to preach, see the church is full, get a tithe and offering, and that voila, the job is done. But when the Lord got me, got me out of that, I begin to see that I needed to go through a program of detoxing of all the religious baggage that I carried. So our paradigm, the paradigm of our perspectives have been entirely predisposed by our affiliation to the ideology called Christianity. When you affiliate to that, it's part of religion. Can you guys hear me? If my French accent comes in the way, please ask <laughs> what I mean. So our understanding of the world, including our mandate, purpose, and calling, has been shaped by Christian ideology. What is that ideology? Hold up your hands, sit in hallelujah bus, get saved, and wait for the bus so you can go to heaven when you die. And we became good for heaven, <laughs> useless for earth. Because this age is going to be banned by fire. Jesus is coming tomorrow. Rapture is coming tomorrow. Whatever that ideology or concept that the religion has developed. And many are still banned to that. So, by acknowledging the role of Christianity in shaping our paradigm, we can begin now to explore the kingdom perspective, the dimensions of the kings of that has to be manifest by us, by each and everyone sitting in this hall. Knowing that it's the particular uh, <clears throat> gifting of God in you that society is waiting. I didn't know about it. I was in Congo, made up in politics. Man, <laughs> when God wants to get you away, you are the way you want. You might not be the way that you want it. The new president that came into power wanted nothing to do with us. We had to flee. <laughs> because I was in the system, a political system that is not of God. And I escaped the political situation, come to South Africa. I got so deep in religion. From one demo, uh, satanic arrangement to another one. It took me another 15 years <laughs> before coming out of religion. So 30 years wasted in doing the thing that has nothing to do with the purposes of God. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from experience. How the enemy can keep on shifting you from one domain to another one, from another one. And so you can spend all your life, 90 years, when you, you, you look around yourself. Thank God, by 30 years, I was delivered out of that. The last one that I had to be delivered was religion, Christianity, the church. It was amazing, Brother John, that the church, within six months, the church grew to the level that you can't believe. The devil brought all those people. <laughs> Today, I don't believe that God brought them. The moment we transitioned to the kingdom, within one week, we went from 300 to 10 people. Nobody came back. And we closed those doors of that building. So what I'm trying to say that we need to shift our thinking from religion, from tradition, from nationalism, to look into the kingdom of God. And that's why it's important that our mindset is no longer the mindset of religion, but it's a mindset of the kingdom. And the download that has been coming on over two weeks, I think three weeks, is such an important, it's like a rain that came down to water the earth. The same that rain came to water our life so we can be reconnected again to the purpose of God by knowing who we are, our identity, by knowing our purpose, by knowing our calling and acknowledging the seed of the kingdom that is in us. And that's how we can take up the play, the territory. I think this has been read already in the beginning. God created, when he created men, the first mandate was not to go to church, not to pray. It was to have a dominion. Because Adam was in a position of, of, of not of sin, not fallen yet, 
it was in communion, perfect communion with God. So the mandate and dominion was, mandate was a dominion. That's why when you're born again, the first thing you see is the kingdom. And then you begin to discover everything that is in the kingdom and why God created us in the earth. So I'm just going to, this has been shared already. I'm going to go to the next step. <coughs> Sorry. We are, uh, for us to shift from the culture of religion and the culture of the world to the culture of the kingdom, what I call, we need some sort of civilization, kingdom culture that have to develop to us, or we need to be civilized according to the kingdom. So I will look at a few definition of, to exercise dominion, we need a, a kingdom civilization. And this week we just finished a course, it's, it's about a kingdomizing the world, it's about the kingdom of God being established in the earth. So civilization could be defined as the peak in which a specific culture reaches in the process of nation history within the world. It reaches the peak where we become the best in the field. We will become the best in the community. We will become the best that our nation can offer to the world. And the world people can realize that, look at that people, they're different. They're excellent in their doing, in their operation in the way they run their business and their family. So our culture of the kingdom has to reach at the peak that the world can notice. Like it says in Nazariah, in the later day, people are gonna to come to the house of God. What can they see when they come into the kingdom of God? Like Nicodemus saw in Jesus. He said, I've never seen a man like you who minister the kingdom like you. Because I've seen something that I have been a rabbi, I've been a chief priest for years, but I never discovered such a thing like what I'm seeing in you. What is the secret? Jesus didn't give him a Ten Commandment. He didn't give him the law. He didn't show him rapture. He told him about the kingdom. He said, the reason you can't see, because you're blind. You must be born again in order to begin to see what is manifesting through me. I think there's no difference to many of us. We need a new birth so that our eyes can be open to the reality of the kingdom of God. Can anybody say amen? <laughs> you believe that? So the dictionary defines civilization as an advanced state of human society in which a higher level of culture, science, and industry and government has been reached. In other words, when the kingdom community reach that place where our culture becomes superior, where we begin to be involved in the creation of industry, where we begin to be involved in changing the nation. Then the people look at our culture and they say, look these people, what they're talking about is no longer just a talk. They're demonstrating by who they are becoming. So that's what we're looking to, to achieve. I'm gonna jump this, I want to, I wanna go to, and that's what the Bible says about the command, dominion mandate. So when we begin to demonstrate that, I think Brother Shabbat mentioned the last week, when we have that, what begins to happen, the result will be the domain will create influence for us. Okay? Influence will give us access to authority and decision makers. It will allow the body of Christ to be accurately established and function in society. And the next page, uh, I will show you what I'm talking about here. Because let me tell you, the power has shifted. The power is no longer with the politician. The power is no longer with the religion. The power is in the marketplace. The marketplace today called the power of influence. I've seen it, the video that I'm going to play to you. I traveled to the Democratic of the, the Congo Cup several times as a pastor. That time, I think 10, 15 years when I went as a pastor, nobody received me except the church. Come and preach here and come and preach here and come and preach. But I was unable to get to any authority. But two years I went back there. Uh, I will show you what happened. The changes. I arrived in the Democratic Republic of Congo, like the Bible said. Go into the nation. 
when the people heard, the politician heard that this is a businessman from South Africa. He, will, he, he came, he's yet to establish a business in the region. I'm telling you within three days, I was received by the higher authority without an appointment. Okay. You know, in those African countries, when you go, you have to pay something to see. I, I pay you, I pay nothing. Other, other video I won't play it here because it's very sensitive. Within two weeks, I, I was received by to the highest position of the land. So I'm just gonna play one of them where one of the governor received me. Let me play it so you can see. It's a French, I didn't want to put the sound because you don't hear what he's saying. This is the government of one of the provinces in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, this is myself. Me and him sitting together, discussing. I asked him two things. I said, look, I'm here to establish a kingdom business. If next question he asked me, he said, what do you want? I said, I want the land. Where well, me and brother John Eber, we're going to put a kingdom center, a kingdom purposeful center. He called his advisor. I said, This man need a land. Look at the best place where there's a facility to the transport and system. Give this man a land for free. Brother John, not, for, for nothing, not even a cent. Because politicians have come to a limitation understanding that. The Babylonian system has no answer to the problem of this world. Mm -hmm. They've tried everything. The unemployment, gangsters, and crime is over their head. They're not sleeping at night <laughs> because they have no solution and answer to the problem facing their nation. And here, a son of man, a son of God arrived. I always don't call myself as a businessman. I call myself as a son of God deploying the business. This arena by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I was received within two weeks, Brother John, even to the highest authority, the bodyguards, like you can see all the protocol, the national television. And I've been talking to Brother, I said, please, when you travel, don't travel with a Christian lover. Nobody will look up to you. Nobody even will notice you can preach in all the churches in Congo. Nothing will happen. But when the seed that is in you begin to, <laughs> to manifest from the inside, it begin to come up, nobody can resist it. And I was able to secure land, to secure some contract, which I not go back, without paying the cent, Brother John. And the man called all that boss and said to them, you see this man, if anyone asks him money to do anything, he's fired in front of me. Because I know what you do, but it's coming to help society. Because I told him, I'm bringing a factory that will manufacture light. Because all your lights are from China. Everything you use on electrical is from China. We're establishing a factory that will manifest, uh, <coughs> that will manufacture lights in Congo. To say, the power, the influence of the seed that is dormant in us. Thank you, Brother John, for activating that seed in the masses that are part of this ecclesia. Because when that seed begins to grow, the influence begins to expand. That seed begins to come up. Nations begin to be opened up. But as Jesus said, go into the, all the nations. We've been, our influence was limited by, by the lenses of religion. We go to the nation, the first thing you see the church and the cross. I remember I was in Nairobi, in Kenya, a couple of years ago. I just arrived in the airport, not even resting. I was picked up from airport to the meeting. And I got to the place where I was supposed to minister. I see the name of the church, uh, Rapture Worship Center. <laughs> <laughs> I, I scratched my head, so I'm coming to Rapture Worship Center to minister. My goodness. And when they give me a mic for 30 minutes, the Holy Spirit, I begin to tell them how wrong this is. I begin to correct that thing because I couldn't take it. But no influence in all Nairobi. I was only from church in the morning, they take me to another church. From church to church, 
until I spend my three, four days coming back to South Africa. No influence. Same, I've been going to some other countries. As a religious person, no influence. But now we begin to go as the sons of God, equipped, led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to go to Mozambique. We're going to go to Botswana. We're going to go to, we're going to establish kingdom school in this region that the kingdom of God can advance to the level that never seen before. So what I'm trying to say is when we practicalize our message, many of us have, we have, we have we already been talking about kingdom. <laughs> We've been having a conversation about kingdom. We, 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 we've been saying it, but now the time has come for us to manifest that kingdom. People are tired of hearing us talking about the kingdom. They've heard it. Especially these days, even the religious people, they, they're talking about the kingdom in their way. They, 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 they mention their things and they add the name of the kingdom on top. But we now have to come, like the Bible said, the kingdom of God is, is, does not just come by word, but by power. And that power will only be created by a seed, the gift that God has deposited in us. So that's what I, that I wanted to give you an example of how when we activate the seed, our influence will grow. Now, like Revelation said, the kingdom of this world, all the kingdoms of the world have to become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. We are his Christ. But how are we going to bring this kingdom those kingdoms under the influence of Christ. I know many people talk about Seven Mountain, which I don't agree with it. Invade them. Any system that the devil has started, we can't make change it. I don't care how anointing we are. If it started by the devil's intention, there's nothing you can do. I say to one, one of my, my son, yes, spiritual son, is a lawyer. I say, you must resign from that. Person. What are you going to do there? There's nothing you can change in, in, in legal fraud. Why? Because we don't trust our system that is superior. <laughs> in the kingdom, we have a legal system. If your brother offends against you, what do you do? <laughs> go to him. But we don't believe in that. If your brother offends you, you go to court. <laughs> You go to the demonic system. We believe in the legal system that the devil has established in the nation because we are so lazy to create something parallel to that system where we can look into it and say, wow, your you, system is failing. This is our system. I'm very familiar with the legal system. Cut the baby in half. When you go there, even your brother, when you finish the legal system, you become enemies. Never you, there's no reconciliation in the world system. But in the kingdom, after you deal with the, with the issues, you reconcile the brother, reconciliation. So we are so lazy and we depend on the system that the enemy has built. And people are saying, oh, am I a lawyer? Am I a qualified lawyer? Yeah, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make a change. I say, look, the legal system of South Africa is not based in the Bible. It's based on the constitution that man made. And that constitution does not line up with the word of God. But many of us here <laughs> has been gifted in a different area. Reconciliation. You've been given in different of judging matter. We don't even have even a kingdom reconciliation center where bread. I always ask the people in Cape Town, if bread didn't have a problem, where are they going to go? That's why we run to court because it's not you can't call brother John. Hey, we got problem here. Can you help us to, to solve this difference? The first thing you phone, most believers have a lawyer's phone numbers in their phone. Okay, they don't have the Holy Spirit's number, they have a lawyer's number. Any problem, they phone the lawyer. I call my lawyer. It's an indictment to us to see that we're not building the system that can sustain the kingdom advancement in the US. Are you guys hearing me? <laughs> Is That's powerful. Coming? I hear you. Is Preach. this coming from? We hear so, you. We hear you, Ambassador. What we want to see in the world today is a change of government, change of system, change of operation. I, I remember when I started the business, it was just a business. 
But now the struggle was to transition it from a business to a kingdom business. It's not the same. The operations are different. But I started as a business. It's just a business, a normal business. I got idea and I went and I started. Down the line, I look at it and say, no, this is the Babylonian. But how do I transition the business from just a business, a normal business that like anybody can start to become a kingdom business? That's why God has inspired Brother John, Abraham John. Started the tribes. Get involved in one of them. I'm involved in the tribe of business. What are we going to do there? We're looking to, to do the inventory among us of the skill that we have. Let us come together and develop a blueprint of kingdom businesses that will be spread across the world, that will transform the African landscape that we don't back anymore. That system can be implemented in Kenya, in Nigeria, in Mozambique. That we now have the microphone. We come and we speak. They listen to us. I say tomorrow when I see the president in Mozambique, I'm not going to come there through Holy Spirit. I'm not going to bring the name, the label of Abbe Christian. No. In fact, in my business card, there's no such a thing as, as a Christian. I'm a chairman of a group, Global Link Investment. And when I arrive in any country, tomorrow morning, when they hear that I'm in that country, I receive a call. See, we, we must expand our influence. You cannot fight from the bottom position. And I don't believe in the kingdom we have classes. Therefore, they've made the classes at the higher class and low. We are one class. <laughs> we are citizens of the kingdom. The only class is the kingdom class. There's no middle class. <laughs> As I, went, I see in England, they, they, they've added the beneficial class. Those people who can support themselves. I mean, I ask the people in Europe, how do you know? They already call you to qualify for that system, you must be poor. So they must call you poor, unable to sustain you yourself. They test you, and then they put you on the system of a beneficial class. They call us classes. That, that's not good. We in the kingdom, we only have one class, sons of God. Bringing the light to this world. We don't have a middle class. What is middle class? What is a lower class? What is those classes that is in the world? That's why we are not to be impressed by the system of this world. We are to build the kingdom system. Hallelujah. I'm not here to preach. I'm just giving the example of, of how this dominion mandate can function in any continent. I said to people, take me to the United States, leave me without money. For three months, I will have the money. Just leave me there with nothing. Because there's something inside of me. You can steal the money. And the good news about the good news about the gift of God in you, it doesn't choose color. It doesn't choose nationality. It doesn't choose where you were born or your parents, whatever, it's, it's, it's not dependent on that. It's dependent on the training and the willingness and the capacity to develop that kingdom there, not being lazy. Some people sleep at seven o'clock and then they wake up tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> you have to be deliberately developing that what you feel and sense God has placed inside of you. The kingdom of God has to invade that prayer. I mean, we pray, we have prayed so many religious prayers. That prayer is it, not a religious prayer that we pray on Sunday morning. That's why I, I was making a note and I was saying to myself, if our gospel is not going to make any difference in society, <laughs> if our gospel is going to make any difference in, in any society, it has to be real. It can't be religious. It has to be a real gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. It must be more than real and has to, to direct address our mindset, how we see ourselves in this world. Do we see ourselves as a grasshopper? Do we see ourselves as able people? Do we believe even that we are capable of transforming society to building the system? that the government of this world cannot? Let, let, let me assure you, and many of these countries that have gone, 
those so-called leaders, they've been sleepless nights. They don't know what to do with the youth. They don't know what to do with the economy. They don't know what to do with the land, especially in Africa. They don't know what to do. And they say, Ben, we don't know what to do. We need help. But people are supposed to bring help. They involve in religion, dancing every Sunday in the boat. And I offended many in Congo. I said, as long as we're in that system called church, religion, you'll never know God from there. You have to come out there. <laughs> and the pastor will not happy with me. I thought, yes, as long as someone is in that institution called <laughs> Christianity, that institution called religion, you will never know God. I was there for 20 years. Nothing happened. It was just marking. I even became a pastor. A very naive pastor for 20 years. Teaching people think that is not aligning to the Bible. So thank, thank God God has delivered me out of that. And I could never forget in 2007 when God radicalized me with the kingdom message. And from that day, I never went back to religion. No appeal to me. You can build a seven story with the church, it doesn't impress you. Because it doesn't advance the purposes of God. So the kingdom does not come by observation. Kingdom is within you. Is within me. The solution to the problem of this world is within us. How many believe that? We are the answers. We are the lights in this world. Unless we bring the light, the world will remain in darkness. They can go to church all their lives. You can even put all the church in one place. I saw in a democratic republic, nine, 15 church in one street. But the place is so dirty. The place is so miserable. People have no job. But they have, the church is at 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday morning. One person invited me to come six or 8 o'clock to preach on Monday. I said, no. No. Church can't be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And in that church, they only teach them rapture. Jesus is coming back. I said, guys, tomorrow morning, you better go out. Jesus is not coming. <laughs> I said, to them, please, tomorrow morning, go away. If you want to go to the market, go. Jesus is not coming. These things of religion making people sleep. Monday church, choose the church. Nothing changed. People are poor. I'm not talking about money because poverty is not money, it's just a small component of poverty. Poverty has to do much with the mindset, how we are conditioned to think. Especially in Africa, we get colonialism, but all those things, and capitalism, and all those things. Nothing works. Yeah. We've tried all the, the politicians have tried all the economical system. I don't care is it is a capitalism, I don't care is it, is a socialism, I don't care. It's, 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 I call it the communism, those system, economical systems don't work. They impress you with the big language ideology, hope. Sometimes uh, it's a best thing. The believe that they're fighting who's gonna win, Donald Trump, whoever's gonna I said, I don't care who you vote. Okay? God is not involved in election. If you wanna go vote, vote. I would never go vote. Why must I vote? It's not gonna change anything. <laughs> because that is not the system that God has put in place to govern the nation. Okay? The system that God has put as a solution is the kingdom of God. Don't waste your time. Go vote if you want to vote. You have nothing to do on Sunday, go vote. But I can guarantee you, those votes will not change anything in any way. Even if you vote out that president, the next president can be worse than what was before. And you begin to cry, oh, I was in Congo. They said, oh, the previous president was better. We wish he comes back. I think this one also leaves. You're going to say the same thing. The solution is the kingdom. So in our family, when I look at our family, we've got some prominent domain that I'm seeing coming. Okay? I see we already have the revelation of the kingdom. It's a gift in this whole family. That Jesus said, to the outsider, the kingdom is a mystery. That's why the church put everything in a mystery. Money is in the mystery. Business is in the mystery. Okay? Because they don't have a revelation. But in this family, we have a revelation of the kingdom. We understand the kingdom. The second one I'm seeing is, I mean, is resourcefulness, not resource. In other words, we have the resource in this family. We have a kingdom 
university. <laughs> we have an ecclesia. We have all those tribes. So there's no reason for you to sit there and say, oh, me, I don't know. No, there's a resource in this family to transform. First, ourselves in the family. And the third word I'm seeing is a marketplace. We have a grace. We have the anointing. We have the gifting. One of my goals is really to see the marketplace, the world. The, the, the Bible said that your, your son will contend for the gate. I think the gate, we were taught last time, the gate is not the gate. The gate, the purpose of the gate is to deny or to give access. The enemy has taken the gate of power, the gate of business, the politics. We have been left to crumble for the under table. It's time to say enough is enough. We have, in our community, we have enough resource for, to impact the world. <laughs> okay? Activation in the marketplace. One of the things that I know, stopping many of you, by the way, uh, I need two people volunteer. One, who have an idea to start a business has not started yet. Second one, you started a business is a year old. And the third one, somebody has done a business over two years. We're going to talk to you. We're going to use a global, a Kingdom Global Trading Academy. We develop the entrepreneur. And we're going to have a monthly call with all of you. How can you go to the next level? Because the business is about mentorship and we don't want the world to mentor you because if the world mentor you, it's about profit, not people. So if one volunteer, maybe it's gonna be time. <clears throat> we can look at, I uh, already spoke about this. So the activation in the marketplace is very important. How do you start the business? Brother John said last time, God never started anything with money. I agree with that. And this is the policy that I've been applying. You don't need money to start anything. In fact, most people start business with money, they fail. Mm -hmm. The enemy has conditioned us to start a business before even you start thinking anything, you think about money. And we are developing a system to show you how can you start a business with a zero cents. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking because I'm talking. I, in my life, started almost 15 businesses. I know some of them fail. <laughs> I didn't fail, the business failed. People say, I failed. No, you didn't fail. If you start a business that didn't work, you didn't fail. That you didn't have enough knowledge and information to, to make it work. What next? Don't be discouraged because of a venture that you start. Some people, I talk to them about, you know, no, you know. Brother Ben, I started the business in 1997, it didn't work, so what? <laughs> Who told you that if it didn't work there, it can't work today? So you don't need the money to start a, to start a business. This is my domain <laughs> where God has positioned me currently. I am the chairman of Global Investment Group. I'm trying, I put a link, but I'm trying to click the actual website. You can take a picture and Google it at home and go to it. None of this company has started with money, zero. And we wanted this to become as a four million our family. Don't tell the outsider, it's for us. <laughs> Global Investment Group currently has a three company. So the group is a holding company. Can't hold any other business that come in. So Global General Trade is involved with the government project. Okay. We want to be a key partner in African infrastructure development and construction and maintenance. Because African, they can build the road, they can't maintain it. Okay. I traveled to Africa. They, I mean, some of the streets, you can't believe. But there's a 70 church in the street, but the church is so dirty, the house, the, the school is broken, the church can't even think about fixing the window. So, Global Investment Group, it's a holding company. We've got a global general trade. I wanted to put a, a website, but it's not allowing me because I changed the left of it. All this company 
None of them are started with money, none. And none of them are started with a business plan. How many of you, how many of you have a business plan? If you have a business plan tonight, go throw it away. One of the hindrances in starting a business is a business plan. You don't need a business plan. You need a business model. That's why we in the Kingdom Tribe, we're going to develop this model. How can you start idea? You need how you gonna how you gonna do this business. Mm -hmm. How you gonna go buy the eggs? How you gonna sell it? How much you gonna buy? This is the business model. You don't need a business plan because you can't have a plan in something that you never started and never tried. <laughs> the idea that you start with it, you may not end up with that. Business expand as you grow, as you advance, as you... I didn't start with a group. I started with a cleaning company <laughs> and cutting lawn. It was called, uh, I think, shop eye service. Shop eye service, cutting lawns. From there, I don't want to tell you, but this group today is a very significant in Africa. And I believe global investment group will solve the employment problem in many countries in Africa. We're going to come there because I see what I do. Jesus said, the devil come, there's only two agenda in the earth. The devil come to still kill and destroy. But he said, I have come so you may have life. How that is going to happen? How people are going to have life abundant life? By prayer alone? No. Yes, we must pray. But by us, I see what I do as an extension of the mission of Jesus Christ in bringing good life to people. Because those who work in the company, they're able to sustain their family. They're able to improve in their career. They're able to make a difference in society. So whatever we do is an extension of that mission. I've come so that may have a life. And part of that maybe has to come from your life. <laughs> but people have to have a good life to you. But as long as you're not starting anything, as long as you uh, you, you have a spiritual obesity. <laughs> Only coming in, coming in, nothing going out. Stand to stand up. <laughs> Understand our gift, calling, uh, our purpose, gift, and calling. And begin to manifest that to the nation. That our, inf our influence expand. Mm. That the table, the table must stand. Babylon has said it's time. Now we must stay in the kingdom as well. Come to the nation. Will you see the position of authority? Son of man. Don't worry about politics. Don't go to politics. If God call you, thank you. But I don't think so that you can make any difference. I was there. God delivered me out of that. <laughs> all the, all, whatever they tell you in the television is a lie. The meeting starts at 1 o'clock and we finish 4 o'clock. We finish meeting at 4 o'clock before anybody wakes up. Nobody must see us. Then from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we discuss what we're going to tell people. Okay? We can't just walk here without knowing what we're going to tell. We must decide what we're going to tell. How we're going to lie to them. I mean, that meeting, sometimes you fight. You don't agree on anything. But when the camera comes along, we had a very good meeting. I think we made it good. But you know, nothing happened to them. I think the time has come for the Son of God to be manifest in the domains of life in the earth and to take up their place, our place, to see changes in the nation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think for today I'm kind of here. Whatever I'm doing, back to you. Thank you, my brother. Everybody give a hand. My Jesus. <laughs> this is this is what makes me happy. This is what gives me fulfillment. Because when I see others, you know, flourishing, others who are doing, not just talking, 
what we have been preaching. So thank you, Ben. This is amazing. May the Lord continue to bless, multiply the seed. Because what is a seed? A seed is something that has unlimited potential to multiply. Like they say, we can count the apples in a seed, but not the apples inside a seed. So this is God's thing. This is God thing, what we just heard. And you repeated many things that I have been saying, which I'm grateful because when we hear from other mouth, it get registered in our spirit, man. We cannot redeem what Satan has established. That's where God calls his people out. Come out of Babylon. Come out of Egypt. Come out of... But we have been so programmed, like I said last week, by mammon, political, economic, religious forces that the enemy has placed on the earth. Now we have to come and build God's kingdom systems, economy, his education, his agriculture, his business, God's kingdom business. So what we are seeing now is the practical application. Like I said two weeks ago, I'm done talking. It's time to do it. This is the time to do it, your domain. We have turned the prayer into telling God what to do. Prayer is not telling God what to do because he already knows. We are supposed to be doing most of the prayers what we have been telling God to do. That's what we turned into prayer in church. We tell God, do this, go there, do that, change this. No, 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 no. That's our job. <laughs> That's why he put us here to bring that change, that transformation. My policy is if he cannot be the answer, to your prayer, don't pray. Because you disqualify yourself unless you're willing to be the answer of that prayer. So Ben, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much for what you're doing in South Africa and other places. And we are so honored to have you as part of this family because even though we haven't communicated much there's a connection in the spirit that god connected us that i i sensed from the first time you showed up in one of these meetings a few years ago so i'm so grateful for what god is what you allow god to do through you and it's only a beginning and now god is switching the gear this season that you are in now he's shifting the gear it might look like you're going to a slow motion gear, but he's empowering you. It may not be the fast pace, but he's it has more power to what you're doing now than before. And that's what he's building, he's adding now. So if anybody has any questions, comments for Ben, now this is the time. I see a couple of hands. Um, Grace, please go for it. Ben, are you still here? Where is Where is Ben? Yes, he is here. It's also here. Okay. Grace, go ahead. Please unmute. Hello, everybody. Oh, wow. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, oh we have two Grace. I'm sorry. About other Grace. Sorry. I'll... Okay, hold on. I'll mute. No, 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 you go ahead. She didn't raise her hands. Only Grace oh. from Dallas, Texas raised your hand. <laughs> I'm in Houston now. Houston, uh, okay. Yes, <laughs> from Dallas to Houston. Thank you, everybody. I'm one of Abraham's first students. Uh, I've been away for a long time. And um, I was um, waiting for some promise one time um, that I was waiting on the Lord. And uh, I just saw myself, the Lord showed me, I started walking back home uh, to my country where I come from as a little girl, uh, my best friend house. And I walk and open the door. Uh, when I open the door and it, it says Abraham John family, I see all these kingdom families sitting 
um, like in a meeting and stuff like that. So I knew that I was supposed to come back uh, home when I saw that vision, but it's good to be here. And thanks for the word that you brought today. I do have uh, some questions uh, one, maybe I should just do one, uh, which is, um, um, you know, talking about like the system of the war. I'm highly involved um, in the system. Um, maybe I wouldn't say I'm in, into the political system, but I do some media stuff. And, uh, but my question is the whole word is involved. It involves system, right? Um, how do you have a purpose if you cannot work in a system? Like where does passion come from? Because you're saying something about you cannot have you cannot leave the political system. I thought that was one of the system. I thought we are supposed to like, that's how we win people or that's how we make changes in the world. I know Miles Monroe had taught uh, what, that part. He had said that um, you political thing is kind of, I know the, the political world does not bring the kingdom or anything, but how do we, as believer get a purpose like because if the systems if those systems weren't there we we can't have we wouldn't have a purpose to be able to work because we all partake in other things in the world you know what i mean like we still have to get driver's license we still have to partake we have to you know uh uh benefit from some of the systems no matter what so how, I mean, how, we can't work. People are not supposed to work, like have a job or the medical system and all these systems because all these are part of the, like the political world. I don't, uh, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit clear. I think those systems are there because we have not built any system in the kingdom. And we cannot destroy it now because the nation will go down. There's nothing to rely on. Let me give you one example, political. Uh, there's no answer in the political arena. And I don't think so. any political system will bring any change in this world. But they're there because we don't have anything in the fact. The kingdoms of God is a parallel to the system of the world. We have a superior system. Uh, let, let, let me give, economically, we have a kingdom economy. I don't have time to spawn that, but maybe one day we're going to have a master class where we discuss those systems. I, I, I was a part of the people that when the seven mandate came, I was one of them who was, let's go and take it over. Huh? Let's go evade this system policy. But I have some little legal background. I'll give you one example. How are you going to make a change in a legal fraternity? That's one of oh, oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were asking. How are you going to change it? Because oh, that system okay. there is not based on reconciliation. Is a divide the baby. The moment you go through that system, where there's divorce, where there's, there's a dispute, you'll never come back and be together. By the time you finish through that post, I, I'm, I'm very familiar and <laughs> with the legal background. The moment you go through that legal system, you finish. If you were, you went you had, with your husband, when you finish, you come back divorced. <laughs> if you went through with the friends, when you come back, you're no longer going to be friends. But we have a system in the kingdom. If your brother offends you, what do you do? There's a system. And I can tell you, we try, it works. But we have not put faith in those systems that, that the Bible has described for us. So, in short, those whole system cannot be removed now because there's nothing else is involved in the sight of the king. We must first education. My highest qualification is metric. I thank God I didn't go to university. I don't say people must not go there. But there's other way to receive a proper education. So we need a, a, some sort of conversation around those. Yeah. Maybe a full day, maybe a master class to discuss about the discovery of God intent how we're supposed to live in it. Because let me give you the political system, you vote. In the Bible, there's no vote. Man is full of tribalism, man is full of racism, man is full of man cannot make the right choice. You vote with the with the pre intention in his mind. 
according to his color, according to his status, according. So that cannot bring peace. But as long as we don't build any system, those systems will remain. Amen. So we need, we live in this world, like Paul said, if we use this principle, don't touch, don't you, then we have to leave this world. No. We use them until we build God's kingdom economy, those systems. Media itself is not evil. Media means it's a medium of communication. But now we have to have it. God's kingdom media systems that we can broadcast instead of always depending on the world they can shut things down anytime remove your videos for example you know i don't want to mention any names here they we become their property or victims or slaves that's what we are talking about god's kingdom is different god's kingdom economy is different from this world's economy that we grew up in right Kingdom government is different from the governments that we grew up under, whether whatever system of government it was, capitalism, democracy, socialism, that's not God's kingdom government. It's different. So that's where we talk about this kingdom nation that needs to come into existence. That's our dream. That's where we're working toward. Right. We have to have a community somewhere to start with. So that's where we are going. That's where God is taking us. But God told Abraham, he's going to make him a great nation. It didn't happen two years. It took 430 years. <laughs> so right. I hope. So will I you say, Abraham, will you say that, okay, so the kingdom government is different from, like we as our individual purposes, because I can live in a word, right? I can work, I believe from what I know and what I've studied through some of your thing in my, my role, you are, you can work, but the kingdom government, like as a, we have like a, we, we're supposed to build guy kingdom government system as a global, right? Because me as an individual cannot build that, but I have to be part of something to be able to fulfill that. Yes. And I, he's giving me passion. So you can't cut me off from my passion. For instance, if I have to advocate for something in different systems, I have to be a part of it to advocate for it, to bring change in that system. Am I correct? Yes, if that's what God assigned it to be. But we have to have something to show before we go and tell the people. It's like, if we have to disciple a nation, we have to become a nation first. Otherwise, we cannot disciple a nation. It's just a talk. So we are trying to redeem the school system of this world. Mm -hmm. But what do we are redeeming with? We don't have a kingdom education system ready yet to show them, okay, hey, this is better than what you have. Now that is eaten by the enemy. Wickedness has been taught to the people. Now we have a kingdom curriculum ready for children. And then we can present it to them, okay, this is kingdom education now. So that's why that's why we need each other. You can, like you said, you cannot do this alone. Right. You can do this alone. That's why we need a kingdom destiny partners, collaborators, as a family. That's why we divided the you no know, divided into different tribes based on your calling. So you can collaborate, brainstorm, pray and receive those download and start building. But we are not used to building anything. We are only used to hearing on a Sunday morning. Oh, that was a great message. Now let's come back next Sunday, hear it again. But we have to start applying this. That's the season we are in now. But whatever capacity we have, resources we have, we have started by God's grace. So the training, the kingdom schools that is happening 60 or more than 60 now, it's all part of that building, the kingdom university. The more it spreads and it depends on you, each one of you have this responsibility. Every one of us, 
what if the body is all eye? It won't function, like Paul says. What if only ears? It won't function. Different members for different function, God has put together in the same body with a different anointing, grace, gift. So let's come together and do this and fulfill our Father's assignment. Well, you've been here, but you're gone now two years. That's why you need to hear this again. Yeah. So now, uh, refresh the memory. <laughs> <laughs> refresh those books that you heard. I know, um, I have them all here, yes. Whatever you heard from some some <laughs> else, you know, dust them off and refresh it. Then it will, it will, it will good. But thank you. Um, Boana, I see your hand. Yes, good, good morning. Mozambique is good even right now. Um, Brother Ben, he was explaining about um, uh, the model and uh, the action plan of uh, the kingdom business. In my other understanding, he said that the, the, the plan, we don't need to use the plan, but we need to use models. And uh, in my understanding that the plan is, uh, is the tool that can have the outcomes and the activities that we need to implement uh, in, the, in the business. Uh, can he, I didn't get properly, how, why can't we, not use the plan instead of using the model because the plan is a, a tool that we use on daily basis or monthly basis to measure whether we are achieving the results that we have planned. So why can't we use the plan instead of using only models? Can you, Brother Ben explain that? Uh, uh, part of what what has been keeping people not to start a business is a business plan. Because you want to plan something that you've never done before. And you're not sure whether this thing is going to work. Most, can you hear me? Most business plan is for the loan to the bank. It's good to go to, to get the money from the bank. But when you go to business plan to the bank, you are new in the business. You never, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. You can yes, hear. I can hear. You start a, a business of a business of uh, chicken tomorrow. The guy who's gonna draw the business plan asks you to on the two thousand dollar, and he give you a projection of twelve months to thirty six months. But you in your life, you never been sell one chicken in your life, and you have not even. You know, when you start a business, you're not capable of doing a proper market research with the product that you want to sell. You don't know how many units you have to sell. You don't know how the finances work. Business has eight levers that you need to know. And so you know nothing. So he's giving you a plan. It's like they give a car, but you've never given a car before. And they say, I go to the United States. You're on your own. Here's the man. It's not going to work. When I said business model, that means a chicken, how much you buy the chicken, where you buy it, how much you sell it, how much is the profit. But after you sell 20, 40 chickens, 50 chickens, now you begin to understand that money is coming in, how to manage that money. So there's a lot of things that you need to know. And even you, if you never started the business to the bank, you take it to the bank, in your own business, the first question they will ask you proof of concept. You know what is the proof of concept? How many you have sold already? How long you've been in the business? So when they say, man, thank you, we read your business, very good business, they ask me one question, can you give us a proof of concept? When I was new in business, they asked me a question, I didn't know what is proof of concept mean. Proof of concept means you must demonstrate that you've done this thing over the years. <laughs> the next time they're going to ask you your, your, your financial model, they'll ask you a lot of questions that you cannot answer. So no matter how much how better that business plan is grafted is not going to serve any purpose for you. But if you start with a business model, you know I'm selling chicken, yes, the farm, yeah, I buy it for $3, I sell it for $5, my benefit is, my profit is $2. This is what the business model is about. It's about the concept that you think that you're going to sell. 
But like I say, for the for, for the short term, I cannot suspend much. But one day, uh, I know my brother is going to organize something where we have a day of entrepreneurship in the kingdom. And we're going to sit and dive into those questions. But I can say to you, with all certainty, business plan doesn't work at the beginning. I can tell you. Amen. Thank you. David, David is here. I saw David. I saw Amit from Nepal. I think those guys left. Welcome, guys. I see a couple other hands. Theory? Yes. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ambassador Ben, that was absolutely amazing. And um, and I think what you shared today is actually really needs a master class because there's way there's a lot more to what you said. And I think some of the things you spoke about, you know, needs to be defined and um and uh and for us to be able to get the understanding of uh, a lot of the stuff that you were saying. But um I wanted to mention this one this one thing which I believe uh, needs to be clear for each and every single one of us, because I believe each and every single one of us have a business within us, right? So the thing is, is that, you know, I hear the term kingdom business, right? So I think that needs to be something that maybe, I don't know, you Abraham or, <laughs> or you brother Ben, you know, Maybe you need to have a course or something like that on on this whole idea of kingdom business to explain what that looks like. What does that mean? Because, you know, we have these concepts coming from the system of this world that's been ingrained within us. So now we talk about kingdom business, you know, like what does that mean? What does that look like? You know, how is it supposed to what's the proof that? you know, it is a kingdom business versus, you know, just a regular business, right? So we use the term, but I think that it needs a little bit more, uh, it needs way more explanation and breakdown for us to understand as a, as a community, as a nation, for us to understand what that is. So we don't get it mixed up with, you know, with the world's way of, of business. Does that make sense? But this uh, teaching you did is absolutely incredible. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Ben, you want to comment on it or you want me to go? You can go. You can go. <laughs> okay. So what is the difference, the main difference between a Christian business and a kingdom business? Okay, I shared this a few times, but um, like we said, we had to go into deep where we needed more time. But a Christian business is a Christian who is doing a business. That's a Christian business. <laughs> it could be any business, chicken fertilizer and he gives tithe to the church or ministry missions you know he gives tips here and there helps the poor give to the charity locally that's a christian business but a kingdom business is originates in heaven it's an idea it's a solution to manifest god's will on earth as it is in heaven in that kingdom business, God, the Holy Spirit, is the CEO. He is the owner of it. Joseph started a kingdom business in Egypt, a farming and construction business. Why? Not to make him money, not to make him wealthy, not that he can give tithe to some mission organization. It was a kingdom assignment. Are you hearing me? It was a kingdom assignment came from heaven to solve a problem that Egypt was today, seven years from then. That's a kingdom business. A product or an idea or a solution released from heaven to address an issue, to solve a problem this earth has, to bring the earth and its systems back into alignment with heaven. That is kingdom business. And we just steward of it. Stewardship of God's idea. Stewardship of God's resources. 
his plan, then it manifests through us. And God owns everything. Not just 10% here, 5% there. No, he is the owner. We are just steward like Joseph was. That's the best example I could use for kingdom business. We are not doing that business to provide, to survive, to make money, to become rich. In the process, we might become rich. It will solve all our personal problems too. I'm not saying it will bless you. It will be a blessings to you. But this is a heaven on earth manifestation. That's a kingdom business. Not for survival. Not with the mentality of making some money. No, that's a Christian business or any other business. Kingdom business is a download from heaven that comes into your, that is your kingdom assignment. And it will work in any circumstances. Like Isaac sowed during famine. He received a harvest. Why? Because he was, he was functioning in a different realm, dimension of God's kingdom. So may the Lord give you, those who are in business, maybe you are started a Christian business, now you transition into the kingdom business. First of all, you hand it over to God. Lord, Father, this is not mine. This is yours. And if it is not yours, I don't want it. So that is the five-minute explanation, the difference between a Christian business and a kingdom business. And future, there's a book coming out, Kingdom Business. <laughs> I have written it, but I haven't published it yet. It is there. I need help with a capital H. <laughs> I see two more hands there. Uh, Martin, I saw your hands before. Then I will ask uh, Lori and Ken. Ah, kingdom greetings to all and blessings to every, everybody. Um, my brother Ben, this was very enlightening, very, very enriching personally and, and just, just overall. I do have a business. I'm still, I'm still trying to... <laughs> Um, decipher if it's kingdom business, church means that just a business. I've been doing it for a long time, very long. Um, but we certainly will have to take that up at another time. But there's several things that came out of what you said that I um want to talk to you a bit on. Well, the first one was um <clears throat> you didn't touch it, but I want to mention it because it came to me when when Moses was building the tabernacle and um, pretty much God started telling him all that he needs and the idea came and pretty much God gave him a list of the people and the things that they need. The first question is, do we have all that we need to build the kingdom of God? Parallel, as you said, to what exists now. Do you believe that that exists in the kingdom, of, in the body of Christ, whatever you want to call it? That's my first question, sir. Unmute, please. Uh, your mic is muted, Ben. Unmute it. Okay. I mean, I, I always believe the scripture. The Bible says God has given us everything pertaining to life. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Everything. When we say everything, everything. The only thing the time and the length of time that we spend in religion. Mm -hmm. Religion means doing nothing. Yes. Giving God assignment. Telling God everything that he must do for you. But I got good news, bad news. For you. God doesn't answer to those, most of those prayers. The prayers of the Gentiles. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have everything within us. But, like, collaborative. Working together. I don't have everything. It's just like in business. I don't do business physically. There's nothing that I cannot do because I can put the mind of people. I can put, if I need to do something, I put a team together. I say, I need this project done. I need mm -hmm. engineer. I need mechanic. I need this. I need electrician. I need bridge layer. And I put mm -hmm. the team and the project is finished. Yes. Who, who gets credit? Me. 
because mm-hmm. I'm together. The same in the kingdom, like I was saying, we need to do the inventory in our ecclesia, knowing yes. what mountain has as a ski. Yes. And then position there with a group that it can be utilized to build mm-hmm. this. I believe in the Bible, all the concept of life is there. I'll just give one example of religion. Business is so nothing short. But mm-hmm. religion has taken us 2,000 years without even building one thing, without yeah. even discovering one nation that we can say, well, this not even a one island. Nothing. Because every Sunday we come and jump and sing and, and give the pastor, buy a new car and do all those things. But we, we do not have the mentality of productivity, of innovation. Yes. This is not from the devil. This is a, it's a bread. Okay? And most of us don't have even a book where we write those dreams. You don't sleep with the book and at midnight God speaks to you and you write it down because if you wait in the enemy, the devil give you one trouble in the morning, you forget about all ideas. So yes. innovation is our bread. The architect of life is in the Bible. Mm-hmm. In the world. So we yeah. have to come together and thank God my brother Abraham John, I've put a group, tribes, where we can now see, lift up your hand, say, I'm good in this. Yeah. And join one of the tribes, make a difference. 10 people, a 10 bright mind can build something that I believe by few or by many. Unless we touch a nation spiritually, economically, socially, we haven't done our job. We just wasting like that. That's how this so, sorry, one last question. I don't want to take up any more of the time. But where, yes, you did answer my question. Jalen is asking me if you did. Yes, you did. The, um, the last question is, just as though God, and, and the Bible was very clear, it says the Spirit of God come upon the different people. There's a guy called Bezalel who did a lot of stuff with whatever. Um, my question is, what is it going to take uh, what needs to happen in an environment like this for, for people to, to, to understand that this is it? And just, just like what we saw with the building of the temple, they just gave themselves. They gave and they gave themselves. What, what, what move of the spirit or how much more we need to pray or fast or whatever else? What, needs, what significant thing needs to happen for that? To happen for us here. So let's start with us. That's I'll, I'll stop here, sir. You see, even nation, I think the nation could change by prayer alone. Africa will look like something else today. Okay? You travel to those rich country in the mineral in Africa mm-hmm. and you look at the condition of the people, you say, my God, what happened? So, yes, we need to pray, but we have spiritualized everything. When you when you hear gift, you're already seeing a pulpit in church. When you hear anointing, you're already seeing intercession group. But there's anointing for every assignment in the earth. What it's gonna take for us in this group is a commitment and defeating laziness. When you go into the kingdom university, you look at people a day, only five, seven people a day out of all this group. When you look at the tribe, sometimes the Lord can say we're only five, ten, or seven or eight. Where are the masses? We have to activate the masses with the right tools to develop what is inside of them. And I think one of the things we're gonna take is a commitment and to defeat laziness. Amen. Thank you, Ben. You know, like I said or in the book, God never starts anything with money first. Never in the history because money is just a tool. So he blessed Adam and he said, be fruitful. He gave us that seed. And we always have everything that we need to start. But the enemy wants to scare you by showing the big picture because you don't have everything to finish. But God always gives us Everything that we need for life and godliness is all being given to us. He has blessed all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Most of the time which stops us is a fear factor like we heard last week. That fear of failure, fear of people's opinion, fear of 
death, those three things, if we can overcome, then you are unstoppable. <laughs> Priscilla, my sister, welcome. Jerome, good to have you. Lori, see, go here. I have to, we have only a few more minutes. Let's finish this on time. Go ahead. Sorry, not about me today. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think this is uh, such so much hope and appeal to all of us, uh, especially if you're like a non-conformist or a independent creative thinker or a critical thinker, this, the kingdom is for those types of people. <laughs> um, it brought to mind um, what Grace was saying too about, you know, the institutions like, truthfully, um, I bet, and I was going over in the minds of all the associations, institutions and uh, things like that, that I worked in. And you can share your ideas but if it's outside of their box, or if it's like a bigger picture idea, they normally don't want that. They want you to conform to what they already have established. And most of them aren't willing to, um, you know, to acquiesce what you want to do, unless it benefits what they already have, have done. Um, they really don't like big picture solvers. <clears throat> Many of institutions don't. I, um, like I recall I was trying to start a business a long time ago and the small business association who wanted me to do a business plan and all that was like not encouraging me with the business they were telling me it wasn't going to work I work for medical institution there are system failures all through the medical institution but they don't want you to solve those problems um, even in real estate I was told I have to manipulate people in order to succeed so um, this is what I mean. This is why we have to get out. There's always a hook in Babylon. And I can't wait for God to reveal to all of us what our, um, our, our assignment is to solve the problem that we were assigned to. Um, so I want us all to have a, a voice and influence for the kingdom. And I pray for that for all of us. Thank you. But this has nothing to do with what you just said, Lori. Okay, something came to me while you were sharing. I think it has to go to Martin's question. What we need to do? What is stopping us? You know what is stopping us from functioning the way God wants us to? Our first reaction to something like this is, what is in this for me? What is in it for me? That's the main enemy we need to conquer. The self. That's what's stopping us. Not Satan. It's not some guys out there. Our some of sometime our first reaction to something. Okay, what is in this for me? How is it going to benefit me? <laughs> okay. Then everything gets blocked there. We won't go beyond that. May the Lord help us to overcome that and give ourselves to him first, like the people in the old covenant did when Moses wanted to build the tabernacle. They just didn't begin offering. Moses had to tell them to stop bringing the offering because it's like they won't stop. They didn't say, what is in this for me? They gave themselves because we are building God's kingdom. We have to take our shift about me, myself, and I. Whatever we do, we have to do it unto the Lord. Whatever we do, that's what the Bible says. Not to a man, not to please anybody, not what is in it for me, is it going to benefit me? No. Okay, we are on its assignment given us from heaven. And our life, our breath, everything belongs to him. The very breath that we breathe, it could be gone the next minute. You know, we don't know, but it is his. So may the Lord break that off of us and bring us as one in him, that we are so caught up in him and we lose ourselves. Okay, Grace, you have 
Molkustin, keep it short, please. Yes, just something quick to add uh, to what you guys are saying. Uh, one of the uh, eras that God had gifted me, one of the era is like the early childhood education system. I mean, um, education field. And in the education field, uh, there were a lot of problems that I noticed are going on with like teachers and stuff like that. I know somebody had mentioned kingdom business versus um, regular business, Christian business or so. And there were like kids will come in the classroom. They had like a lot of issue behavior issues, like problems from homes and different problems with teachers and kids. So one of the things that I had noticed I had done was I used to see that I was good at setting things that other people weren't good at. And I felt like if I were to solve that problem, it will help like teachers, like teachers will come with a lot of grudges in their hearts and like mileage towards children who have behavior. So they had like, they had struggled and struggled. So I started to say, you know, I need to come up with a solution because anytime I enter a classroom, it would just be peaceful. So I knew that God had given me a grace for that. So I began to write in a book. I wrote in a book about winning secrets, secrets to help teachers to win on how like, I will go in a classroom with 50 kids and I'm able to help them sleep, right? If a child is not sleeping for many years, uh, you know, over the years, they're just having problems. And then God's given me a you know, wisdom to bring peace into that room. So I will always like, you know, assume that peace before even coming and stuff like that. So I started to help teachers. I sat with them and started to tell them what was some of the problems because of what they brought in the classroom. It attracted things that the kids were rejecting. So like bringing that peace, you know, was helping. So it really did help them. And I created that and told them like, if some of them were gifted at certain things, they will be able to help other people in other areas. So that's how I came up with a book. Um, and that was very helpful over the years when I was there, you know, and it helped the teachers to be able to bring some form of stability to some of the problems that they were having in that area. Thank you. Excellent. Wonderful, Grace. Keep up the good work. Ambassador Grace from Jamaica. Please unmute. Yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Blessings. I just want to say uh, thanks for the word today, you know. It, it's so real and I do appreciate it, but there is something that resides in me that I would love the speaker to just um, retract a bit and just, uh, you know, talk a little bit more and that in the area of the marketplace. No, um, it, it, it resides in me because I always, uh, dream about the marketplace. And when he mentioned that something reside, you know, it sparked something in me. So I just ask him just to reiterate a bit on that, please. Thank you. First of all, are you a year old in next year? So can you, can you hear me? Yes. We are here, I think the whole five continents are represented. I see this platform as a launching page mm -hmm. okay? where the enemy will no, no longer have his in way. We can no longer sit and watch our nation being devastated economically, especially my brothers and sisters in Africa. This thing that called a, a, con a proof of concept into the rest of the world. We have to build a proof of concept in a few countries that the kingdom has advanced in, in the marketplace. To come to my sister, marketplace is, like I put it on there, it's a place that you have left for too long to the enemy. But life without marketplace, because most of us in the world, marketplace is where you work, where you where the, the economy works, where the salaries come, that's a peak. But we have left the marketplace uh, in the hands of the enemy. The gate, the enemy control that. But the marketplace is a, is a vast. I don't think it's a subject that we can. Uh, uh, what I did today is a summary. 
just bringing a summary of each and every point. But we'll come a time where we're really going to come that day and let's talk about this marketplace. Let's debunk the mystery of this marketplace so people understand when we say marketplace, what do we mean? Our time will not allow us today, some of in the group. That's why it's join a, business, a kingdom business tribe where we will unpack the demystify this marketplace that is not in the school to some elite. <laughs> it's not your, you, you, you don't need MBA. Okay, I got the people in the company that got MBA, or they got doctorate, they got all this that, but they work for me with the metric. So it's, it's not about having those degrees, nothing bad having those degrees, but it's understanding in the kingdom, the thing that God has deposited in us. It's bigger than any degree in the world. So we don't just rely on the degree. I don't say don't get one, please don't get me wrong. But that is not what we depend on. We depend on the gifts, the grace and the power of the kingdom for advancing. So I think uh, the, the market is, is a, it's a, it's a big concept that I won't be able to define it within a short time because in the marketplace, the government of this world is wasting money talking about entrepreneurship. You will never be an entrepreneur if you never started a business. So you don't start being an entrepreneur. You started being a businesswoman or businessman. You start something. You succeed, you move to the second one, to the third one, after you have the proof of concept that you've established some business and you can move to the to the entrepreneurship because that deal with the broad aspect of the marketplace. Yeah. I think, Ben, you need to put together a material and, and a course from the Kingdom University called the Kingdom Business. <laughs> I'm writing the book, uh, My Street MBA. <laughs> yes. So when that That'll is ready, very, very active thing for the kingdom. So when that is ready, we need to have a course made from that book, and have you teach this in a in a longer um, term, and so everybody can get what you're talking about in detail. So maybe be, even before the end of this year, we need to get this going. So let me know. Let's let's talk about that. I felt like, you know, seminar because we are located in all different locations. But if you bring together those who are interested to learn more, that's why we have the Kingdom University platform. Then you offer it there. Whoever wants it, then jump on it. That will be a wonderful opportunity. And also, if you are called, if you have taken some courses or training so far, you called you feel like you're called into a specific assignment, whether business, agriculture, innovation, territory, land, government, people. We have different tribes for you. Just tell us in the chat room or in the Ecclesia big group. If you are not part of the WhatsApp Ecclesia group, we encourage you. I think some of you already left. Leave your phone number with country code and your name in the chat box here on the screen. Mama Pedro will collect it. I think she might have already gone. No, she's here. She's not feeling well, but she still says it's almost late late there, but she will collect it and add you to the WhatsApp group. So please do that because we would like you to be in your community of your tribe where you belong. So you can flourish. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs a community. Everybody needs a family. Everybody needs a like-minded people where they can hang out and brainstorm, pray, and receive that download from heaven. That's where we have different tribes. So let me know. Share that in the WhatsApp Ecclesia group, and I will add you to different tribes. So Priscilla, good to see you. I see your hand. Greetings, everyone. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Abraham, regarding our brothers. Uh, get the book, get the book done, <laughs> and then let's let's uh, jump into uh, a more detailed uh, understanding and um, employment um, or deployment to building and adding to the kingdom of God. But my comment. Uh, is I so appreciate uh, how you started your, uh, <clears throat> uh, what you were uh, imparting today, Dell, um, and you you began 
it, for those that might not remember, uh, as a man thinks, so is he. And our thinking is so, uh, so critical to everything that we, we do and are and uh, how we present ourselves uh, in this world. And uh, so I just wanted to offer um, uh, a challenge, if you will, and that is uh, to offer ourselves up um, as an individual and our thinking and our thought lives, uh, our mindsets, the things that those things or the things that our minds are set on. Transformation only comes by the renewing of our mind. And I think that we have, um, this uh, has been so, um, has become something so framed in a religiosity that is, uh, that we dismiss. We make it popular and uh, it, it is, um, it is a cute statement that we make, but to actually live it out takes processing. And transformed people transform people. And how do we bring people out of and into uh, the kingdom, kingdom mindset, kingdom reality, kingdom being as a kingdom daughter, as a kingdom son? How do we, um, I, I feel as though some of us are asking, some are asking that question, even on uh, in this gathering here. Part of the reason um, that I hear is that we are in different places in our in our spiritual journeys. And so wherever we are, and again, I'm going back to how you framed everything, my brother, uh, when you begin to speak, when you begin to teach us, when you begin to release what um, what Holy Spirit has seeded and sown in you for the kingdom of God, for actually not just the kingdom of God, but for um, for the world, right? And so we're talking about change. And without change happening in the mind or in our thinking, a, a change will not take place and cannot be established and will not be sustained. And so I just felt as a community uh, of, of uh, a kingdom preneurs, I'll call us for today, uh, as we're talking about marketplace, kingdompreneurs that we would offer our ourselves to the Lord and ask him, ask Holy Spirit to show us if and where our minds need to be changed. And then of course, asking him to take the lead and to show us, to lead us in, in that particular uh, journey. And it may be, it may be a very quick uh, process and it could take a little time in order for our minds to be changed about our own understanding. Uh, as, as I can see, as we can see the questions that we're asking about uh, what Dell has, what our brother has presented to us today, uh, there, there, there are big question marks. And some of those questions pertain to, well, so how does this relate to, and what is this really, how is this kingdom and how what I have been doing perhaps in the past, not kingdom, and uh, how do I need to change my mind? And so I think I've said enough there on that. I just wanted to offer that, um, offer a challenge. And again, thank you for, that was your starting point. As a man thinks, and I believe that everything that we do, uh, everything that we um, that we uh, express, and the way we show up in the world has to do with the way we think. And so it's 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 pivotal, it's critical, it's essential. Uh, and uh, so I got I just want to say God bless you all, and uh, and thank you, thank Thanks. you for today. Excellent. That's why Jesus said the first word out of his mouth was change the way you think <laughs> because the kingdom of heaven is coming back because this kingdom is not going to function the way you've been brought up in your culture, by your education, by the religious background. Unless we change here, this kingdom will not benefit or cannot manifest. So thank you, Priscilla. Next week, we are going to hear from Francis Klein, another kingdom ambassador. The reason I'm asking 
others to share like this because we want to see the practical application of this. I am not here to impress you with the message on every Sunday and and grow and you become gray hair and then you go to the grave and thank you Jesus no whatever we preach if you if, if you write this down this is the last thing i want you to write down today if something is not practical it's not kingdom if something is not practical if you cannot do it in the natural then it's not kingdom it could be a philosophy, ideology, or whatever it is. If it is not practical, it is not kingdom. And we don't want to waste your time, my time, just preaching and trying to impress and spit and 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 do all those things. No, let's do this. And this happens like Priscilla said, when we give ourselves to him, to God, change our mindset, everything that we burn, let's, we become like a child and learning everything we were taught and learning again, born again. Born again means go back to the beginning, start all over again. That's what it means. So, Jerome, I see your hand. I saw I give you one minute. Yes, good. Um, good day, um, Apostle Abraham. Good day, good day, saints of God. Thank I've you. been missing in action. Um, for a while, but um, I'll, I'll just make use of that one minute. My one minute has to do with season of birthing. Um, there comes a time, Abraham, where one is available, and there comes a time when he is not, he or she is not. And I'm going through that period now, which is the, call it the season of birthing. Um, I've, I've been birthing the kingdom in my country in St. Lucia. It, it takes a lot of my time to do that. Because the people that you are meeting with, you definitely have to spend some time with them to birth, to birth that kingdom. And I would encourage the saints, um, the kingdom citizens, you know, to birth. Because if we don't birth, whatever we are sharing could be stolen from us. Because remember, uh, religion is not, is not dead. I mean, it's a weapon of the enemy against the kingdom. So whilst we are um, giving out ideas and vision and not buffing, you know, the enemy is smart enough to sit, hear what we say and do it because the principle of the kingdom works for, for the doers, whosoever will do it. So now that's what I am doing in my country. School is reopening tomorrow and I'm, I'm going to the schools to birth kingdom principles, which we have already started and then I'm also meeting with businesses who would sponsor those activities that I am doing with the children. It's not going to be my money. It's going to be the kingdom's money that they are holding so that I can utilize it, you know, for the kingdom. So you not seeing me, not hearing from me. I'm very active, both in the kingdom. Thank you so much. Man, Jerome is very active in the San Lucia and in the Caribbean, running many different kingdom schools all over the place. Bless you, my brother. Good to see you. It's been, we missed you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ben. One more time. Appreciate you. We pray that. Let's just pray for Ben. May the Lord bless him and use him more and more. Expand his territory, his boundaries. Father, thank you for the deposit he has made into us today. And let that harvest, let that seed bring him harvest, new connections, I see growth. I see expansion in what you're doing. Actually, Ben, you've been waiting for this time. All your life, whatever you have done, it's a preparation for now. Oh, something is birthing out of you. It is for now, this season that you've been waiting for. All the trial, error, learning, experiences, Ever, wherever the, the Lord took you, that was, a, that was a training. But he has brought you to that place where he wants you. And now you understand this more than ever. So we bless him, Father. Protect him. All these enterprises, businesses, co-workers, his family. We thank you for keeping him healthy. Cover him with your grace. And I thank you for everyone here who heard this word, who is part of your kingdom family, Father. 
Jesus, you said you will build your ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Thank you for this opportunity to partner with you, Father, in what you're doing on the earth today. We, we are so grateful. We honor you. We love you. Thank you for this privilege to partner with you. Deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from our self. I thank you for your grace. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Please don't miss next week. Bring a friend. Invite somebody. And it's going to be glorious. So this three weeks now, four weeks, now you have two videos that from the beginning, then Sharbrett, then Ben. Now you have four videos to watch again. <laughs> because it's a we are building something. We are going something. God is taking us one step at a time. And I'm so grateful for what he's doing. Because it's a progression. And I feel, I, I, I hope you sense that. I hope you see it. Amen. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Kingdom salute to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.